What is going on, Bucks fans? Evan Wanish here, back at you with another video talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And today we are going to be going over the players to watch for this weekend's matchup against the Chicago Bears. The Buccaneers are oh, are excuse me, one and zero, oh, coming off an impressive win against the Minnesota Vikings, while the Bears are zero oh and one, following a pretty disappointing loss to the Green Bay Packers. And of course. Uh, the Buccaneers will be first game in Raymond James Stadium hosting, right? Uh, for the fans, of course, the home opener, first time all season. So really excited for that as Chicago comes to town. But without further ado, let's get right into this list as the Buccaneers hope to go to 2-0 uh, on the season. And first name I, I want to have is Mike Evans. And more specifically because of the Bears uh, who they don't have, Kyler Gordon, uh, will not be playing in this game. He's one of their starting corners. think there might be some opportunity for Mike Evans to really shine in this game. He had a touchdown last week. He had a few drops I'm sure he'd like back. I, I think he plays a pretty clean game, and I think Mike Evans is certainly a guy to watch in that receiving room. Who's going to be throwing the ball, though? Baker Mayfield. And the reason he's probably on this list is because he did pop up on the injury report this week with a shoulder injury. Now he was full participation both times that he popped up an injury report, but he did pop up on there with the shoulder injury. I think it's something to monitor just to see how he plays. Uh, how does that shoulder respond? Hopefully he doesn't take many big hits. Hopefully the shoulder doesn't get worse. So really that's not an issue. Uh, it was an issue for him in Cleveland, right? So it is a little bit of a worry that after one game already, he already might have a shoulder issue. So keep an eye on Mayfield, of course, and see how he progresses. And also another week in this new offense for all these guys on offense. So I, I think Mayfield can definitely bounce back and, and start a little bit faster. He finished strong. He finished really strong against Minnesota. Obviously, the second half was pretty fantastic, but a little bit of a faster start, I think, would go a long way in, in bringing confidence to a lot of Bucks fans uh, about Baker Mayfield as the starter. Another player is Rashad White. And Aaron Jones, the Green Bay Packers running back, really had a nice day against his Bears defense. I think Rashad White, could be in for that big day and maybe not as big as Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones had a monster day, but I think Rashad White wants to bounce back after a, a lackluster performance, I would say, against Minnesota. He wasn't awful, but there were some lanes I think he could have hit better. Uh, there were some more explosive runs he could have found. Buck's run game wasn't really doing a whole lot, so a little bit of disappointing. But look, the Bucks run game was so bad last year that I think it's going to take time. Right. Like, I, I think it's going to take time for this thing to really turn around. I think Rashad White could maybe start that this week. So I would expect Rashad White to not only get involved in the run game a lot, but also the pass game a little bit. He was not targeted a lot. He had two catches for 10 yards in the passing game. I think the Buccaneers want to utilize their backs in the passing game a little bit more. So I'd keep an eye on that. On betting the Bucks, I had the over uh, receiving yards for Rashad White. So if you want to go watch the first episode of betting the Bucks available on the channel right now, go ahead and do that as long as uh, along with the other bets that I have there. But uh, I do think Rashad White could be a player to watch as I, I think the Buccaneers want to feed him, you know, early and often in this one. And uh, an another one that I'm going to say is uh, Zion McCollum, because as it looks right now, Carlton Davis may be out for this game with a toe injury. He did not practice all week. It appears that is something that could possibly hold him out of this contest. So if Carlton Davis were to be out, Zion McCollum then comes into a bigger role on the defense. And McCollum has been a really good special teams player. Last year, he did struggle at corner a little bit, though. So I'm curious to see how McCollum responds to that, being sort of thrown in there into that mix against the uh, Chicago um, you know, passing attack that has some solid players. I mean, DJ Moore will probably be lined up against Jamel Dean if Carlton Davis can't go. Uh, but then, I mean, you know, Darnell Mooney versus Zion McCollum, like, I think that's a big matchup. And I think uh, the Buccaneers – don't win that matchup, it could be tough sledding for the defense. So I am going to be keeping a close eye on Zion McCollum as he's expected to make a season debut at starting corner uh, because Carlton Davis, like I said, most likely not going to be able to play in this one after not practicing uh, all week. So hopefully Carlton Davis can get back shortly, um, but hopefully in the meantime, McCollum can step up and, and fill in admirably for him. 
Now, the final player that I'm going to talk about, and when we do these, the final player I'm going to talk about is always going to be my X factor. And the X factor is, I think, the most important player on the team that needs to have a good game in order for the Buccaneers to win. And this week, it was a player who had a good game last week, and I'm hoping he can replicate that this week. The player is Devin White. And it's Devin White because Justin Fields, while he has his struggles throwing the football, and it has been a little bit tough sledding for him, he can still run the ball. He's still one of the fastest quarterbacks in the league, one of the most athletic. He can escape pressure, get out of the pocket, and make things a lot more difficult on defenses. And that's where I think Devin White has to come in. I think with Devin White's speed and agility, he's probably one of the best bets on the Bucks defense to be able to keep up with Fields and keep him in check. Sort of I remember, you know, back in 2002, like I remember how Derek Brooks would be the spy, right, on Michael Vick. Similar to that, I wonder how they're going to utilize Devin White. I think they could utilize him as that to make sure Fields doesn't get outside the pocket too much, to make sure he's throwing the football. Don't let Fields beat you with his legs. Make him throw the ball over and over again and see what happens. So I think Devin White, who, like I said, had a really impressive game last week, a really good start to his season in Minnesota, made some impressive tackles, uh, was decent in coverage. Coverage is not always going to be a strong suit. That's just the way he is. But um, for what he did and what he's supposed to do well and what he hasn't done well in the past, sometimes inconsistencies with tackling, overrunning things, he was pretty good in Minnesota. So I'm hoping that we can get a repeat performance of that because if we do, I think the Buccaneers defense could have a lot of success. Like I said, if you can force Justin Fields to throw this football 30 plus times, I think it bodes a lot better for the Bucs defense than say Justin Fields running the ball 15 times and only having to throw it 20 times. I think it makes puts more pressure on the Bears offense to maybe put fields in some situations they don't want to put him in. So I do think Devin White is this week's X factor, but let me know what you guys think. What players are you watching uh, this weekend? Do you agree with my X factor? Do you have a different X factor? Let me know. I'm very curious to hear it. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And go Bucks.